Alright then my friends, so we're going to be hooking up our application with Firebase and Firebase basically provides a feature rich backend to our application. So we don't have to worry about setting up a server or managing it or creating any kind of server side code for authentication or data retrieval, etc. And we can host our web app on here when we're finished too, which we will be doing. So it makes setting up a dynamic project really simple and it's free for small projects as well. So for now, we're concerned with setting up a database. Now Firebase comes with a real-time NoSQL database called Firestore, and we'll be creating one of those. But first of all, we have to create a new Firebase project. So you wanna to go to firebase.google.com and sign up for a free account if you don't already have one. Then go to your console over here. So this will take you to a list of your projects. You might have none at the minute. All you want to do is add a new project. Now give this project a name. So I'm going to call this Net Ninja Mario Plan. Okay. So once you've done that, you can select your location. I'm going to leave that as the default one and click I accept over here and create the project. So this might just take a minute, but once it's created, then you'll be able to go to your project dashboard. All right, so click continue when that's done. And then this is the dashboard of your project. So you can see over here, we have all of these different services available to us. We have authentication, the database, storage, hosting functions. We'll be using some of these later on. For now, what we want to do is add Firebase to our application. We want to connect the two. We want to tell our React app how to connect to this Firebase project that we've created on the Firebase website. So to do that, click on this little icon right here and you're going to see a snippet of code. So we don't need to worry about this because we're going to use NPM to install Firebase. But what you do want to do is grab this stuff over here inside the second script tag. So I'm going to control C to copy all that. Then what we want to do is head on over to our project. Now, I'm just going to open up the terminal and first of all, I'm going to install Firebase using npm install Firebase, like so. So then now we have that Firebase library installed, what we can do is go ahead and create a config file for our Firebase setup. So I'm just crossing all the rest of the files off. Then over here in source, what I'm going to do is create a new folder and I'm going to call this config. So any kind of config files will go in this folder. Then I'll create a new file called fb for firebase config.js. Okay, so first of all, let's paste that stuff in here. So what we're doing essentially here is creating a config object and we have an API key that you don't need to worry about making public to people in the browser. This is more of an identification key so that our project can identify which Firebase project on the back end to connect to. Okay, so don't worry about that being visible on the front end of your application. That's absolutely fine. We can secure our data later on using Firebase rules. So anyway, we have different information about our project right here. And then we initialize the Firebase app. And so what this does is allow this project, this React project to connect to our Firebase project. So First of all, what we need to do inside here is import a couple of things. We want to import the Firebase library, first of all. So we import Firebase from and then Firebase forward slash app. So what we're doing here is importing just the base features of the Firebase library. That's what forward slash app does. We could import all of the features using just Firebase. But if we do this, we're going to get a warning in the console saying we're using the development version of Firebase and we're importing absolutely everything from the library and we don't need absolutely everything. So let's just import the core functionality plus a couple of other things. So we'll import Firebase forward slash Firestore as well. So that's the database. So we're going to import that functionality into our application so we can use that. We're also going to import Firebase forward slash auth so that later on when we work with authentication we have this imported as well and we can use that in the application okay so make sure that you replace this with your config details the stuff that you get from over here and then down here what we need to do is just one little addition and that is firebase.firestore 
and this initializes the fire stall. Then we want to add on the settings and inside settings we pass in an object and what we're going to do is pass in a property called time stamps in snapshots and set that to true. So this was just an update in the Firebase library which changes how Firebase works with timestamps. So just place that in and everything is going to be fine. So we just need to add on this little bit of code right here just so the console doesn't complain later on about that update, okay? So now we've done that, what we can do is go ahead and export default Firebase. So we're exporting Firebase now and that means that later on in other places inside our project, then we can import this Firebase object and we can use it to interact with our project that we've created over here. So we've set up now our Firebase for this project and in the next video what we're going to do is create a Firestore database and take a look at the data and how we're going to structure it inside our database.